To begin the process of setting up your TSIM software program, we're going to start by going to the main menu, clicking on settings, and then clicking on the company setup. We're going to start with the second tab called lists. We're going to start at the very top where it says payment methods. I'll click on the word payment methods to expand the view. And here I can view all the different types of payment methods. There's really nothing to add or delete here. However, if you do wish to create a new payment method, simply click on the new method option, type in your new payment method, say whether or not it's a bank card, and then click the drop down to either say you want to use the Charge It Pro gateway or no gateway at all, and then simply hit save. And of course, you do have the ability to either edit or delete any of the payment methods. The next section we'll cover is the item tax. Go ahead and click to expand. In this case, very similar to the payment methods, there's really nothing to alter here. However, in some states, there are certain tax laws that we have to accommodate for. So for example, in some states, there is no tax on youth apparel items, but there is tax on adult items. So if you do need to create a new item tax, you can just click on the item tax button, type in what you want to call the code, enter a brief description of the code, and then say whether or not it's taxable or not taxable then hit save and as always you can either edit or delete any line items that came in with the program the next section we'll look at is the sales category go ahead and click to expand this is a very important thing to set up correctly from the beginning although you can alter it later a good recommendation on how you need to set this area up is if you look at your chart of accounts or your item list or products and services list in your current accounting program. The sales categories are what will eventually get married up to the accounts in QuickBooks. The sales categories are eventually how you will generate reports later. Because I have a sales group called Apparel, I will then be able to generate a report that shows me what I did for apparel sales, for example, in the month of May. If I have a sales category for just screen charges, I can then generate a report that shows what I did for sales or even what my costs were for screen charges in the month of May. Sales categories are how you want to drill down on the information you are generating in TSM. Every apparel item, every embellishment, every charge that is put on a customer's order has to go to a sales category. It is recommended that you speak with your accounting professional if you need help as to which sales categories you should be creating. Again, also looking at your chart of accounts or item list in your accounting program will help. To create a new sales category, simply click on the green button that says New Sales Category. All you'll do is simply enter in a uh, quick uh, name for the category. And then if you want, you can enter in the QuickBooks item and then the QuickBooks class. Although when you do set up your QuickBooks integration, this will automatically happen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save for now. You also have the ability, just like in any other area, to edit or delete any sales category that came in with TSM. The next section is the terms area. As you can see, we have several set up for you when you first get the program. And then as always, you can create a new terms type by clicking on new term or you can edit or delete an existing terms type. For those of you who are not sure about the difference between the net 30 and the 30 days, click on the 30 days, you'll see that the billing cycle wants to pick a specific day of the month 
to make the payment due. Then any orders that are incurred in this cycle time frame are due on the first of the month. Whereas the net 30 is different because it looks at the invoice date and counts off 30 days from that date. Click to expand the next section, which is sales tax. When you first get the program, this area will be blank, so you will have to use the new tax rate option. Simply enter in your zip code, and TSIM will create all the tax options for you. If you prefer, you can create your own tax code by clicking on the Create Own tab. Simply type in your tax code, enter a description, and then enter the rate, and hit Save. And as always, you can edit or delete any that you will not be using. Please refer to your accounting professional for further guidance here. To set up your quote stages, click to expand the options. You will see the stages that came in with TSIM. The purpose of the quote stage is so that you can easily see where you are in the quote process. Some stages happen automatically, and some you will have to manually move to that stage. We will cover this in part two under the company setup. You can edit or delete any of the current stages or click new to add a quote stage. To change the color, you will go into the edit option and click on the color bar, make the change, hit OK, and then hit save. If you want to amend the name that's in there, you can change it very easily and then hit save. Very similar to the quote stages, the work order stage allows you to easily see where you are in the work order process. Some stages happen automatically and some you must manually select. You can view the work order stage from the job board. We will cover more about work order stages in part two under the company setup. As always, you can edit or delete any of the current stages or click new to add a stage. Here, I'm gonna add a stage called at outsourced vendor. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the markup tables and we're gonna kind of tie that into the next area called customer groups. But first let's start with markup tables. You have two options on how you want to set up your markups. The first option is a flat rate markup that you can either have quantity breaks or no quantity breaks. The second option is to create markups that get applied based on the cost of the item Again, you have quantity breaks or no quantity breaks. The first four markups I created are flat rate and I have no quantity breaks on any of them. I'm going to create a fifth markup called 60% profit. Click on the new table, enter the name, And then as soon as you hit save, another screen will come up so you, that you can actually create the markup table. The minimum quantity must always start with zero. And in order to get a 60% profit, I'm going to have to use 150% markup. I'll click add row and then hit close to save. If I need to edit that in any way, I can click the edit option to delete this row and create it again. Or I can click on the pencil icon if I wanna rename this to something else. Now let's look at the new customer markup I created. In this markup, it has quantity breaks. 
So if the customer purchases less than 24 pieces, the apparel item will get marked up 150%. However, if he purchases 75 pieces, the item will only get marked up 100%. 100% markup is the same as doubling the cost. So if you have a $2 t-shirt, it'll now sell for $4. If you want to use the markup tables that are based on the cost of the item, you will have to use it in conjunction with the next option called Customer Groups. Here I have created four markup tables that are based on the cost of the item. If I click on the Edit option on the goods value of zero to two dollars, you'll see that there are quantity breaks, and that there are specific markups for that quantity. But this will only apply to items zero to two dollars. The next goods value markup is the 201 to five dollars. If we look at that markup, it starts at 100% and then also has quantity breaks. The third one, 501 to $10, starts at 80% and then has quantity breaks. If I now move to the customer group, you'll see that I have a standard markup by cost group and I am now using the four goods value markup tables. So when I apply this to a catalog item that is in a customer's order, if the apparel item is less than $2, it'll use the goods value zero to two dollars. If it's 201 to five dollars, it'll use the goods value of 201 to five dollars, and et cetera. In your customer group called bronze, if I click on that to look at the markup, you can see that it's using the new customer markup. Well, let's go see what the new customer markup is now. So I'll go back to the markup tables I'll find my new customer markup, hit the edit, and here's where I can see what the new customer is gonna get when he has apparel items in his order. As always, if you need further instruction on either the markup tables or the customer groups, please let us know. The next area we'll look at is customer industries. This is simply another way to categorize your customers. To create a new industry, click on new industry. To edit the verbiage of an industry that already exists, simply click on the pencil icon, type over what you want to type in there, and then hit save. The next area we'll look at is imprint locations. Pretty much everything's covered here, unless you have a unique placement area that you want to create, or maybe um, you want to call this a center back instead of full back, um, you're pretty much good to go here. Again, to click new or delete something that you don't want in the drop down or the pencil icon to edit. Ship methods is the next area pretty much the same as the next uh, few areas and a couple of the ones above it. Uh, you can create a new one, you can edit it, or you can delete. The next area is the lost quote reasons. I really like this feature. This is whenever you move a quotation to a lost quotation you're gonna to have to state one of these reasons why you're losing the quote. And then another field will come up where you can actually type more information. One that I would recommend that you create is maybe putting in your competitor's name. So I'm gonna click on new lost quote reason, and then I'm gonna say lost to ABC company. And again, whenever you lose the quotation, you'll select the loss to ABC company and then type in further information about why you lost it to ABC company. 
to edit, click the pencil, you can delete, and then obviously add a new quote reason. The art stages are very similar to the previously covered work order stages and quote stages. The art stages only appear inside the art detail information area. Again, you can click on the edit option to change the color or change the name of the stage. Create a new stage by clicking on the new art stage. The marketing effort area is a way for you to keep track of how your customer heard about you. When you're creating a customer, you will pick one of these options, such as did they see my billboard, did they find me on Google, etc. To create a new marketing effort, simply click on the new marketing effort option, type in the option, hit save. To edit an option, just simply click on the pencil icon and you can edit it. And then of course you can delete any of them. What you want in this drop down are all the ways that you're marketing and promoting your business. So if you're not advertising on a billboard, then definitely delete that one out. The last two areas of the company setup list drop down are the supplier groups and the supplier categories. Supplier groups are just that, a way that you want to group your suppliers. A couple of ideas might be um, suppliers that I get free shipping with versus suppliers I don't get free shipping with. Or maybe you have tiers for your suppliers. So you want your sales reps to buy first from Alpha Broder and then if you can't get the product from Alpha Broder, then it's a second tier uh, vendor such as Sandbar, etc. The supplier categories are a way for you to group by the products that they sell you. So um, Alpha Broder, Sandmar, SNS Activewear all sell apparel, but then Madeira sells um, the consumables for embroidery. And as with all the areas, click on the new supplier option to create a new category, use the pencil to edit, and then the delete option if you want to remove anything that appears in your drop down. Thank you for watching this video. You are now finished with part one. Please move on to part two of the company setup.